I'm talking today to Anshul Vora, the lady behind India's most consumable form of news, unbiased, relevant, bite-sized, half-minute videos. And the singular thought behind this has been that if entertainment has moved to videos, why not with news? And I think I found this all very interesting, very astonishing too, because generally when you look at social media formats, videos, youth, they are generally skewed towards music and dance. But here the youth have been creatively using their skills. They have been employed for giving us the relevant unbiased news in a very, very light, crispy, fresh manner. And all kudos to the team at Newsline for being able to do this so well. Also, I think that what I got intrigued by was that this whole team at Newsline is together in it, not for any incentive which they are able to get today, but it is for the passion. They are there, they are using their own time, they have full-time jobs, yet they are doing this day after day with the responsibility of a complete news setup. And I think each one of them, not only Anshul, but each one of them has in them some innate seeds of being chief culture officers for their own organizations that they are able to keep themselves together with all this bonding, with all this togetherness and not losing sight of the responsibility of the very serious responsibility which they are shouldering, but only communicating it in a light, airy manner. Enjoy this conversation. Welcome to the show, Anshul. Welcome, Anshul, to Small Big Wins. It's a pleasure to have you. Uh, thank you so much for having me. It's honestly a pleasure to be here and great to be connected with you. Thank you. Anshul, why is it called Newsline? Is it anyway? Uh, now it's actually called just Newsline. Okay. But, uh, because it, it was a mouthful saying Newsline is it anyway and people would just call it Newsline uh, anyway. <laughs> so we shortened it down to just Newsline. And uh, I think it's, it's just a funny take on the show, which is you, whose line is it anyway? All right. And, yeah. And I, we, we thought it was a nice, funny take. And uh, now that it's called Newsline, there is a little bit more meaning behind it because it's, our tagline is sort of cutting through the noise. So the line and the news, uh, that's what we intend to do with it. That's the idea. And just for the benefit of our listeners, mm -hmm. what is the space which you have addressed? What is the gap which you have uh, kind of plugged right uh, so i think when in shorts came out the idea was to consume new men, news in 60 words that was the idea and that was the gap they filled that people wanted consumable news and they were reading at that time more and more and it was easier to give them flashcards of, of 60 words what we think is that the consumer is now moving away from text and moving towards video so it's all about consuming news in 60 seconds now instead of 60 words. So that is the place where we want to be, the intersection of news and uh, and video. That's where Newsline is. I mean, I have found the whole concept very astonishing. I was not knowing about it. And I looked at your Insta page. You have uh, close to 50,000 followers now over there. But... Uh, what I found really creative was that uh, there is, a, generally speaking, you know, the youth using Insta is more or, more or less skewed towards music and singing and dancing. But here, there is the creativity of the youth, which has been employed with news and uh, communicating it in a very light, fresh, crispy kind of a manner. So what was the genesis of this? Yeah, I think you nailed it perfectly. The idea was, when we started it, the idea was that the youth is on Instagram, right? And uh, the youth is what we want to target. We want to ta be showing news to the youth. We want them to be more uh, more aware and, and, and make sure that the news that we're giving to them is unbiased. Because I think a lot of the pages that we have and a lot of the news channels that we have are completely biased. So in, when we started back in August 2020, this was the idea that the youth is there and they are consuming 
uh, memes and videos and what not and if they get to see maybe two to three posts in a hundred posts that they see and which can add a little bit of knowledge to their um, to their day that's what we wanted to do and when we started we did not do videos honestly speaking we started just with text we slowly pivoted towards flash news which was um, just just doing news and then we pivoted towards uh, videos and even in videos we've seen a lot of change we started with uh, sort of giving a reporter type summary of the news in 60 60 seconds but like you said people are more cute towards music consuming music and consuming a sort of mindless um, information so how do you make sure that news is given to them in that format so what we started doing was adding more music into it and maybe giving the same amount of um, information but in in a way that that was a little more consuming to them so there would be music playing in the background like the trending music that you see that you're hooked on to but you will see text on the screen which is giving you information so i think we've been um, playing around with a lot of formats within the video section as well just to increase the consumability of it and uh, you said unbiased so what makes you say that it's a very heavy word and uh, <laughs> it's something we have really been um, you know we have been debating whether or not we should be using that in our tagline because i think once you claim that you're unbiased it's a very heavy word to be responsible and accountable for uh, i personally feel that no individual can be unbiased i think you've grown up with a certain set of values grown up with a certain side, kind of news and people around you and no individual however much they try can be totally unbiased i think the way to address that is to have two people one from one end and one from the other to have 50 people 25 from one and 25 from the other and that's what we're doing so um we have a team of around 50 people and there are people with very different ideologies on the team who are working together and creating content together and um i, I think if you pick a single post from anything i i don't think you would be able to say that this is completely unbiased but if you pick the last 50 posts you'll be you know as a whole you'll be able to say that it is unbiased so that's the idea of having more and more people on the team with different ideologies who are able to share their thoughts and i think what is the most important for us is logic uh we end up having a lot of arguments and debates within the team itself which is really fun to watch but what comes out of the end of that is is logic it, it's usually not a left or a right solution it's a very logical solution uh we also introduce a type of article which is a for against article and we would pick up a topic and do different sides on it for example the jaldiawala bag restoration that was a very controversial topic people felt that it should not have been done and it was just tasteful and some people thought it was just celebration of um and just make and and, and making it beautiful and making people more aware about it so we did a for against post on it we had two different people write about it so i think that's the best way you can do unbiased news in um as as a news page and and your new content today more of it is in the video format or more of it is in the in the text format mm, so if you look at the app it's a little bit more text right now because i think video is slightly more investment from the people who are making it editing um and, and a lot more but we're pivoting towards more video um yeah it, it's a text right now but the future is video mm mm-hmm. and uh, you know on this matter of unbiased mm-hmm. why while i appreciate what you said and it's about the team and having all different kind of people on the team but mm-hmm. for a reader or someone who's watching the news a consumer what is the test for her or him to know that this is unbiased like i said i think you should be able to pick on the last any of the like you should be able to look at 50 posts or maybe you know 10 or 12 posts and within that you should not be a bias i think and honestly one of the metrics that i i personally think are uh, that we have on our on our insta page we have gotten comments saying that you were extremely right wing then this is this is uh, extremely biased and we have gotten comments saying you're extremely left wing i think that is an indicator in itself that's a very crude up indicator but it is an indicator if the, if we are getting accused of being left wing and right wing that means we are covering all bases so good that's an interesting yeah. <laughs> okay yeah <laughs> and um, no you are employed in a full time day job 
yeah. right? And you, I saw your website and there are some 52 people on that. And I think there are only five or six, maybe seven people who are full-time working with Newsline. But there is a variety of people you have on that. There are people working in Amazon, United Airlines, Siemens, and uh, yeah. different, different companies. Uh, uh, how are you able to keep all this together? People are not working full time. What is your culture mantra to, you know, keep it so well bonded and keep churning one day after the other with such fantastic news coverage? Yeah, I think um, you are spot on in saying that we have an amazing team who is working round the clock without um, the incentive of money and just to the incentive of passion. And we have people who've been working with us since day one. Uh, since August 2020, they are students and they've been working till this day. Until this day, they are one of the uh, hardest working people we have on our team. So honestly, the team is one of the best thing that I have personally gotten from this uh, venture. Um, it's it's a great set of a variety of people, like you mentioned. A lot of it came from the ISB network because uh, people who work from ISB approach us and we're obviously ready to have whoever's interested work for us. But I think the culture that works for us is putting people above numbers. There are uh, times where, say, I will give you a small example, like on Instagram, if you have the same person making reels, there is more of a visual, um, like a remembrance of, of that space, right? And you're more likely to have more followers in that case. But because we want to um, include everybody and we want to give that little bit of um, like a fame uh, and make sure every, every person gets on it, we, we, we have everyone do their deals on the platform. So I think, yeah, I think one of the important things has been putting people over numbers. And I think the second great thing is that people really cover up for each other. Uh, during the holiday season, a lot of people were off, obviously, but since we were a new platform, we couldn't really be off. And we were, we were a startup. So any one day where our engagement goes down, it, it really, the entire month's engagement, it, it, it takes it down with it. So people were doing the work of, of two interns, and they were doing it willingly, and everyone stepped in, whoever could. So I think that's how uh, we managed to make it work. But as an anchor of this whole setup, which you are, yeah. um, what is it that you, you know, that, what is it that you do to cultivate that belongingness, that uh, ownership? I, I think if I look back at it, um, it, it's, it's about giving a lot of ownership to the people. I think the people who have really worked for us, they have a lot of uh, buy-in per se in, in the in, in, in the team. I think they feel like they belong to it and they feel like they are an important part of it. So they're not just working for us. So I feel Newsline is them and they are Newsline. And that's a very cliche thing to say, but I think that's true. And I think that is the culture we have been subconsciously been propagating to, to them as well. Do you have a lot of conversations with your team members? Oh, yeah. I'm on WhatsApp 24-7. <laughs> Uh, just uh, some of the other team, yeah. And and you're not a traditional uh, new setup, of course. So how do you aggregate all this news? How do you decide which one to put up or which one to not? Because it's such a big universe. Yeah, definitely. And uh, the thing is that we're doing a lot of formats. So one is flash news, one yeah. is reels, and one is what the long forms that we're doing on Instagram. So sourcing and ensuring and sort of um, giving the tick to any of these in itself is a very big job. So right now we have, uh, thankfully we have like different teams and people who are managing them separately. So for long form, we have two people who are looking after it end to end. So I, I'm sort of just overlooking that and they are doing most of the heavy lifting. Similarly for yield, I am Tali manages yield end to end and she is the one who's um, and looking at what kind of content goes on the platform and what doesn't. For Flash News as well, we have, like I mentioned, we have seven interns. So I think four of them are interns who write the news. So everyone, there's a great community of sending news, uh, talking, adding different news. We have experts in different fields. We have people who are experts in sports and they send in the news that they come across. So like I said, it's just 
sort of uh, an aggregation sourcing that everyone's working together on. And how have you been able to match this uh, whole schedule of yours while working full time? How have you maintained sane sanity in this? <laughs> uh, yeah, it, it does get difficult. And there are times that we, so Pushpal and I started it, right? And Chatali and Nikda joined in later. There are times that we have taken mental days because it gets too much for us as well. So, um, yeah, I think how I personally try to manage it is I take out two hours before my workday starts and two, hour up, two hours after my workday ends. And um, at least my chunk of work I can get done during that time. It, it, apart from that, I'm usually online all the time on WhatsApp and overlooking something or the other. So, uh, I mean, the, the, the easiest, that, that's how I do it. And again, some days when I'm not available, someone else takes over. And uh, that's how we're managing but uh, I mean, what what is stopping you from taking the full leap? Um, there isn't anything stopping us. I think we were looking at the right product market fit, fit right now. I think this is a very new uh, idea of views of news and video. And now I see a lot of channels coming up with their own apps. Like EP started their own app right now which mm -hmm. is very similar to, um, no, not similar to what we're doing, but the gist is videos in news and videos. Mm -hmm. So I think we were looking at the right PMF. We were waiting that we know that the product that we're doing is the one that is required in the market. And then we were planning to go all in. I think we are in the talks of going all in. Uh, let's see, I think at least one of us should be going all in uh, soon. And, and this team, this founding team you spoke about, the four of you, mm -hmm. uh, what what kind of common vision do you have for Newsline? Uh, I think the idea is to become the one-stop source for uh, quick consumable news. That is the main vision. Within that, we really want to explore the idea of regional news. I think that is something that's very interesting. Uh, news in regional languages. I think a lot of your users come from that space. And we are look, we are already doing news in English, English and Hindi, mm -hmm. but um, I think we need to move beyond that. So I think that's one of the places. And the idea is essentially to become a product team and move away from being a content team mm -hmm. because we want people to come in and do this for us. And we, we would essentially be the product behind it. Mm -hmm. So maybe think of like a Netflix of news. And, you know, these, these, team members of yours who are bringing the news, particularly in the video format. Mm -hmm. This is all kind of produced, created, produced, conceived, directed by them. Yeah, 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 yeah. I think initially we were, uh, we were, we had a lot more control over the kind of in, um, topics we were picking, how we were doing. But now I think everyone's like a free agent and they're their own creators. And it's the creators who, figure out everything from what to pick, how to do it, and what should the duration be, and so on. So out of all the experiences which you have had so far with all the news and with so many people over the years, um, have you kind of been able to um, define some kind of a common philosophy for the group? Um, philosophy for... Philosophy for how one has to communicate. What is the kind of news we want to give? How do we give out oh. a news which is not pleasant? Or yeah, I think this has been something that we have learned as these news have come in. I think um, I, I am someone that makes sure that when we're doing a sad news, we we add a trigger warning to it, and we don't make the notification clickbait. I, I think a lot of news companies do that. They made a notification, very clickbait, and it has the entire detail of, of the occurring. And I think that that can be really harmful for people to just, you know, stumble across it when they're just using their phone. So I think, yeah, I, I don't think we have philosophy written, but there are things that we have learned over time to handle. So this is definitely one of them. So again, you know, what intrigues me is that you don't have it written and probably you don't have many things written. Yeah. So <laughs> this, this, the way all of you are able to keep this culture, which is mostly in a way unspoken, but very much spirited and very much in vibes 
uh, how you are able to thrive on it i think you know as a as a person who was who has been very people oriented in business i i can be really proud of what you are doing and i'm sure you are yeah definitely um hands down and the best part is that things like this when we when we talk about it once the team makes sure that it's continued in the future as well so it's not like we have to keep reminding them so i think the culture that comes from top down is is really well in, inculcated in the team members as well and a little about yourself i mean were, were there any feeds of journalism or any feeds of inquiry or news or did you make a stoic resolve sometime that i'm going to change the new face of india <laughs> uh not that i knew of i think i there was a latent uh uh want inside me to do that but i didn't know of it i i did love writing and reading from the mm-hmm. very beginning i think when i was younger i used to get scolded for reading novels and i used to hide them read them in my washroom so that i i was definitely interested in reading and writing and that's how pushpal and i connected as well um uh, pushpal saw an article i did in on linkedin and he liked it and he just talked to me about it and he also writes a lot of his opinions on on different platforms so that's how it started so i definitely love writing and moving to videos meant that you were switching away from writing which was a little hard for me but i i think um, it totally makes sense yeah i mean i am completely a huge huge fan of the videos which you are putting out there yeah and i think videos maybe of course you're writing and i think the writing that you do there is so much more important than the writing you do as just writing because it's, because it's a script now it's not just an article so the script needs to be spot on with how you're starting it how you're communicating the information because i think people are not used to waiting for in 60 seconds to get information they're used to just tap 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 you know consuming the headlines and then moving on so how do you ensure the users um attention you caught their attention for those 60 seconds i think um that's an, a, a a level above article writing as well um, compliments i think it's it's all it it looks very flawlessly delivered by each of them i have seen all your anchors and all your colleagues it's flawlessly delivered thank you i i will definitely pass on this uh, amazing <laughs> feedback to them uh what are some of the most exceptional shares which you have done in the new space i mean when you look back you are also proud of it ye humne kiya hai some articles you mean that we were yes yes um yeah i think that was i'm sorry i'm going to talk about mine because that's what that i remember uh, at the top of my head there was one article i wrote about um uh, feminism about sexism and about analytics and uh, the on uh, statistics statistics basically so i'm from an analytics background and i do an analogy between sexism and statistics and that was on the first article in our page that just blew up and did amazingly well and i i received a lot of flack and a lot of feedback on it uh so i think that is as an article that remains close to my heart till date um i think there was another article we did that was a covid to do uh to do before during and after your vaccine and it was like this little toolkit that you know you could get all the information from very concise very uh, to the point i think that was also that that is an article that has the maximum shares maximum likes till date so i think i i think that was a very good way of um get me the point of what the users wanted at that point of time i think people were scared and it was nice for them to read about something that could give them all the information about the vaccine in one place and that's really interesting how social media works i think a lot of people won't have consumed it or consumed that information if they weren't on social media mm-hmm. like i wouldn't go and search about should i do this after a, a vaccine or not i probably might not have mm-hmm. and yeah. and doing all this bringing all this news together putting it out in the public space mm-hmm. um you have been doing it since close to one and a half years i think now yeah yeah the insta page exists for about 18 months so yeah how have this changed you as a person have have has your outlook in some ways been 
change the way you feel life or the way you feel situations yeah i just wanted to add another example to the last question you asked um there was an article we did when um the sushant singh rajput thing happened about how media trials are extremely hurtful to people and especially to to women and mm. i think that article did really well as well and i think it was extremely important to write about that because of how the other media platforms were tackling the situation it was insensitive it was hurtful and it was it it, it was in, in some ways very appalling mm. how they were addressing the entire situation so i think the way we approached that was really well i think it was a very a, a one of the articles was a very point to point summary of what had happened and one was a very uh, one was an opinion that was a criticism of the media in in india Mm. and uh, i think that one was that one also did really well and again it's something that i'm very proud of as a journalist well thanks for bringing that up yeah yeah, yeah. sorry and back to your question how this has changed me i think there are so many ways this has changed me uh, first and foremost i like to start with how it has changed me as a leader uh, um i have become so much more aware of how to talk to people how to address um i address people's work when and when not to give feedback i think that has been really because obviously i've had to give feedback i mean it's it's not like i haven't had to scold someone i've had to and i have learned how to do that in the best way and i have also learned how to make people work like what you were mentioning people are not incentivized by money here they're incentivized by the culture and by the kind of output they're producing so how do you incentivize them day in and day out and um i think things and these things it's not like i i know what i've done but i i see the change after these many months like you you think back on how you were 18 months ago and you think back to how you are now and you can see that change so a lot of change as as a leader i would say has happened and i'm extremely proud of that something i take to my work as well and i will obviously take to other jobs or maybe other startups in the future as well so you know about ifb mm-hmm. so of course you, you mentioned that a lot of ifb alum uh yeah lift as part of your team members and contribute towards the content which you are creating but how much of what you are as newsline is because of ifb uh we've had this question before honestly and the okay. one line answer to this is that isb helps really helps you get your foot in the door right but after that it's all you it's all about you yeah so we have had we have been looking for funding as well so we okay. have had talks with um a lot of the your venture capital uh, institutions and it was very easy to get that first call because we knew someone who worked there or they knew any someone from our team but i think after that it really doesn't matter yeah after that it's all about how well you do but um, definitely the insta community the the iz community has been so helpful in getting it started and ha- in people approaching us mm. because we have an entire batch of the next 900 people and all of them know about newsline so we a lot of them approach us and they want to work for us so in both terms and people wanting to work for us and in us getting more opportunities to grow the network has been really amazing are you asked questions by your team members particularly and particularly among those who are very active that uh, uh, when will the incentivization happen uh as soon as we get funding i think our very first step would be to incentivize the people who've already been working for us since since a year and then you would build um and the, and the rest would go into building a business model for uh, more people to come in mm-hmm, mm-hmm. yeah and this journey what have been some of the backlashes you wouldn't want to have had <laughs> yeah um like i said um a lot of pieces on feminism get a lot of flack honestly and it breaks our heart to to see that people's mindsets have not changed over time and the problem is they're not willing to learn so you, the the idea when you write an article is to get people to learn a little bit more about your point of view and people who are not willing to learn and they're, they're ready with their criticism 
is uh, is a little sad honestly i think that is one um I, yeah i think that's the main part having those sort of comments on our on our articles i see that i i think even in your team uh, it's more of girl power <laughs> yeah i mean all of our seven interns are women so that and that is not something we planned for i think we were just saying out their salaries for the month of november and i realized that all of them are women and that was so amazing to see and um, our founding team as well three fourths of it is women yes so that's amazing yeah indeed and so so coming back to your story your life a little bit you know mm-hmm. what do you think you can relate to in your life which have happened so far which led to newsline or it was just that the idea came together the the discussion with pushpanjal happened or it was something which is there's some story behind the story um I think that's a good question, and that's something I should think about. But uh, I think it started from the mutual love of reading and writing. Mm. That's where it started, and I think um, I I don't think there was some it's something emotional behind doing it in videos. I think it I we just thought it made sense. We just thought that's where the industry is going. That's where the consumers are, and that's what we need to do. But definitely, if you talk about making a change to the world or putting be able to put across your point of view i think that is something that has always been inside me i wanted to be a lawyer when i was a kid so i think there has always been this um passion to talk about what you feel and to give that platform to people to come and share what they believe in and mutually learn from that i think my my journey in isb with having a meeting an n number of people from n number of backgrounds has also been that i was able to learn from them so mm-hmm. uh, when we started newsline that was the idea that people should be able to comment and one of our taglines that we used for the captions was let's discuss so the idea was to get people together and and to discuss and talk about things so i think um i think that's where it came from i think i wanted people i wanted to bring my voice into the world and i wanted to learn more from people's voices as well and uh, what have been some of the most difficult things you have had to take on in this journey apart from managing your time yeah <laughs> i mean have there been have there been some kind of very difficult personal challenges or uh, you know new line challenges where where you said ki oh my god where i are... think there have been challenges such as uh, should we post this or should we not post this or is this uh, you know for example like i said there are people who are left wing and right wing in, in in our team so one of the major challenges has been to figure out how to make sure that we are unbiased so for example and uh, this is just an example one of my other team members Uh, admires Rana Ayub, who is an extremely left-wing journalist, and she wanted to do a profile on her. So one of the challenges for me at that time was should we post it? Because if we are doing a profile and such a an admiration wala profile on on a left-wing journalist, then are we not being unbiased? And honestly, we ended up not posting it because we thought it didn't fit our bill. so that has definitely been one of the biggest challenges what are you fearful of i am not fearful of anything i i just thought it didn't fit the bill of what we were doing as new line no but generally uh leaving aside oh, that, oh, that <laughs> what are you fearful of <laughs> um sometimes i'm fearful of um what we are doing with the with the platform i think i am a little sensitive to the kind of feedback i get especially with videos because it's it's a new sector right and we are doing sometimes we're doing fun pointing reels and um i'm i'm fearful that we might not be seen as a serious news channel if we do that but um it's consumable 
So we have to figure out what is our vision. Our vision is consumability. So everything that is consumable goes. It doesn't. It it it's not about whether or not it looks serious. So I think that is one of the fears I have. And during moments of these kind of fears or mm-hmm. low moments, <laughs> yeah, whom do you bank upon? It's your founding team. It's someone at home, friends. I yeah. I think it's a mix of everything, but it comes down to the founding team. I think um, since, like I mentioned, Chatali is the one who's who's handling deals. We would have a conversation. We would have an argument. I I won't shy away from saying that. We would have an argument. I would say, listen, I don't like this, and she would be like, listen, we need to give that creative freedom to people to be able to do this. So there have been times where we have vetoed, where I have vetoed a, a video and said, guys, this is too too much fun for a news channel. We can't do this. So these are tough times. I mean, founding with, fighting with your founding team and fighting with, uh, for like like if if Chatali leads the real team, it you you have to understand how to handle that conversation as well, because she is responsible for the team. So you can't really tell her what to do. So I think that is another one of the things I've learned, how to manage a conversation with another senior. management person right because you you can't just tell them what to do you have to come to a conclusion i think uh, you know what i what i get a sense of and what i really admire is that how all of you are being able to keep an independent viewpoint uh in this organization or in this a uh, system of news delivery which you are doing how you are able to respect each other's viewpoints and keep it independent and i think that's not easy saying it yeah. is but doing it is not easy at all yeah yeah definitely what have been some of the some of your most uh, inspiring moments in life it's not only about the news line life but generally um i i start with one about news line only i think um Mm, I, I feel my family is very proud of me. While even if they don't show it, my dad recently asked me to share with him a message that he could forward in his office group, saying <laughs> that my daughter has uh, started. And and he has never like praised me about it before that. So that that one gesture was really heartening and really nice to see. um apart from that i think um, my academic achievements have been uh, really important to me because my mother is a teacher so i know the kind of joy it brings to her as well and what drives you i think uh, wanting to make a uh, leave a mark in some way or the other i think there are a lot of us if i mean my background is engineering and then mba it's it's one of the most basic things people do so i don't want to leave without making a mark and honestly newsline has been such a great way of ensuring that i am leaving a mark in in some way it might it might be a small mark it might be a small dent for now but um it's a dent and it it's something that is important that's why it's important to me well i think it's a very important dent yeah yeah well good good so uh, anshul i think these are the kind of things which i wanted to ask you is there anything else you think we you would like to talk about or you would like to mention i don't know if i have been able to do enough justice or not because i could keep going on with you for another hour <laughs> i think you brought a lot out of me that that i wasn't sure i wanted to talk about so i think it's been a successful um, I, what you were mentioning initially with you want to understand what, what i am and what the world doesn't see and i think you have been able to do that <laughs> all right fantastic fantastic so i think uh, anshul we can uh, maybe uh, put an end to this uh, conversation over here and uh, maybe in uh, future times i'm going to come back to you again Yeah, and definitely. talking on small big wins. <laughs> I hope it will be a big, big win at that time. And <laughs> absolutely, wish you all the very best. And and you know, keep being the culture officer you are being. And probably everyone in your organization is a culture officer. So 
keep being the culture officer i think that is one thing which makes everything else look so small and keeps everything else irrespective of uh market position product or uh, tangible uh, wealth culture is one thing which always takes the lead that is what i think yeah i definitely agree so i wish you all the best and all your team the very very best